Pearl Harbor, I was teaching school, and a little first grader comes up to me. Sunday night it happened. Monday morning she comes up to me. She knew everybody was afraid. Is are they near Viroqua? She said because Viroqua was near where we, where I taught, mm -hmm. and so she was very afraid because she didn't know where Pearl Harbor was. Well, then my brother went. Well, that was the oldest brother, Lawrence, we met. And he went to, he ended up as a tail gunner on a plane in England. And uh, I did not, we did not know till after the war when I went over to a dedication of a memorial to those people who lost their lives, what had actually happened. But what happened was, it was a malfunction of the plane. This was a little village, and it was an air base. And it had, the plane had just taken off, and then it, the man who told me had been 11 years old at the time, and when he knew I was there, he took off from work and came over and took me to show me where it happened. <laughs> And it happened, it came down and bounced across the road and blew up. And we knew it was something like that because there are three buried together. They're in the National Cemetery. We can't have them around. Uh, one was from Virginia and one was from Texas. And so they buried them, buried them in St. Louis. And uh, then when I went back, they really, for that memorial, they really treated us wonderfully. Where was this? In England. Um, no. <laughs> oh, um, Dunkeswell. Dunkeswell. Mm -hmm. In western England. It's just a just a village. The only thing that ever happened there like that. So the boy remembered it very, very well. Mm -hmm. well I, guess, I guess you couldn't forget something like no, that. No, they couldn't oh. forget it. Uh -uh. And so then. I remember when he, we got the word that he was killed, but we didn't know anything. They don't, they didn't know, we didn't know anything except that he was killed. And then my second brother, who was on the farm, he wanted to go into service, Francis we met. And so he went to sign up and they said, oh, we don't want you, we need our farmers. Okay, he said, today I quit farming. And he went in. And then he was badly wounded in Italy. He was in the infantry. Badly wounded. He never, never talked about it until about three years before he died. And I said, we'll never know, Francis, if you don't tell us what happened. Because he was six months in the hospital. And what happened was, he was in the infantry and they were going house to house in Italy up in the mountains. And three of them got under the porch and a mortar shell came in and hit him. And he said it didn't hurt. It it deadened every nerve ending. And but there was blood all over. So the two others, they weren't hurt, they went down the mountain to the tent hospital and got some medics to come up and take him by relay down the hospital on a litter. And there, he said the chaplain stayed with him all night. He found out later they thought he was going to die, so he stayed with him. Then he was taken up over the uh, mountain to Florence, Italy, to the hospital after a number of days there. And they put the litter over the jeep Hood. One held it here and one held it here, and it was a bumpy ride. But anyway, he got up to Florence, Italy, and I still have the letter that he wrote trying to tell us, you know, they couldn't tell us anything where they were or anything. And he, we had an Aunt Florence who we called Aunt Flo, and he wrote in this letter that I have, uh, Aunt Flo, I had a letter from Aunt Flo, she thinks she knows where I am. She's wrong, but she should know what she was trying to tell us was Florence. Mm -hmm. So he was there a long, a long time and then taken back to the U.S. And all these things had to be reconnected, so that's why it took so long. But it changed his life.
changed it completely. Sure. He never married, he never, you know. Well, so, Marple can tell you a few things about the war, too. Yeah, I bet.